Hello everyone, my name is Athino and I am an ex-Challenger League player, which I played in the league before Pro League, so I know a lot about these roles. I play at some of them at the highest level, and I want to show you guys how you guys can play them better, whether you're a comp player or a ranked player. This is my knowledge to you guys to help you guys play better. Now, first of all, let's get this out of the way. I don't believe that roles are that big in ranked because it's ranked, it's a lot uh, less coordinated, and um, there's not a lot of responsibility. However, this helps narrow down what kind of player you are. So I'll be going over nine different ones, nine different ones. And before one more thing to get out of the way is there is a saying that is better to be a soldier in a garden than a gardener in a war or whatever it's called. I don't know the quote, but that, what I'm trying to say is that it's better that you guys kind of overdo it a little bit. That way you can compensate it in for ranked and it'd be a lot easier to be a breeze for you guys. All right, let's play a game, you and I. See if you can guess what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking of a game that you can team up with other players in PVE, boss battles, or fight in PVP battles to get all the glory. You can build up your team from almost 600 champions and take your chances in dungeon runs or boss fights. I bet you already know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Raid Shadow Legends. Use my QR code on screen or try the links in the below to try Raid yourself or even to your phone or your pc and if there's three places that i'm going to play raid shadow legends here are my favorites number one on the bed after a long day of work chilling number two after a long day of stream i get to sit back and relax and you have some food or even number three if i'm trying to get fit you know get all the ladies you gotta work out while playing some raid i mean honestly there's no even point of working out if they see if a lady sees me playing raid they're all over me and this month is huge for raid they just released a brand new fiction the Sullivan Watchers with some amazing new champions, Force Elves, Ents, Droids, and Fays. They're all here and I can't wait to summon them all to play with. And that's not even enough. The raid has got a full lineup of events along with a new season of the Forge Pass. And this is where you can get your hands on some of the most powerful gear the game has ever seen. Also, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid now. But there's even more! New players, use my link or use the QR code to scan right now. And you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $30, which is a free champion, Aina, and also this cool in-game loot. You will find rewards here in your inbox in the next 30 days only. And once you're in, you can find me under my name, Athena. And if you're fast you can join my clan and it's that easy just click the link in the description and i'll see you in the game now on attack there are five roles and on defense there are four roles uh some of them are very similar but uh obviously attack and defense are totally different concepts so let's start with attack entry if you're an entry obviously you have a good shot right you're, you're supposed to be getting map control by winning your engagements that means it's not only just getting kills you could get a kill on the roof but no map control really depends on what happens um you have to understand also you'll be taking mostly fair engagements uh this will kind of mean like you will have a drone in front of you and you know you're basically on even ground you know the roamers are coming your way but you're also coming their way at just as fast as speed um instead of just you know you're like slowly getting in and then boom roamers kind of jump on you you kind of have very fair engagements um, one of the big mistakes, and actually Bosco, who is a pro league player, probably one of the best players in the entire game, he said this in that clip. Another big thing about the entry that I don't think people really talk about or think about is like, you gotta know when to slow down. Like, when people are going in with like Ash and they got a drone in front of them, it's easy to like get carried away when you get a, when you pick up a couple kills and you start getting map control. Like, you gotta know when to slow down, just hold your position and like play, start playing it more passive while your team comes in and sets up and gets ready for execute. I think that's also a very important thing because like a lot of times you'll see an entry go in and get a couple kills and then like maybe they'll get a little too aggressive on something and then lose their life. It hurts the execute and the setup. So I think that's another important thing with entry is just knowing like hit the brakes. I thought this was a very good answer. Um, it's really important that entries know when to slow down, how to follow a drone and when to hit the brakes. You have to have that discipline when it comes to having a lot of map control Wait for your teammates. Don't overpeak. Uh, I mean, it's okay if you die, but obviously it's better if you stay alive rather than you being dead. So know how to also follow a drone. If you know how to follow a drone correctly, then you will have the best amount of information for a room. And also, you shouldn't be droning for yourself most of the time, depending on ranked. Like I said, this is very situational. But if you can have a teammate or maybe someone in your Discord, uh, Xbox party, have them join you in. That's most likely going to be uh, anybody besides you, basically. 
uh, the support player, it really does not matter who. So the next one that we're going, going over is the support. The uh, support players are the bomb planters. Now, bomb planters obviously need to be alive for a long time. So understanding you need to be alive. You cannot be getting spawn peaked. You cannot be taking these first engagements. You should be on drone most of the time. Before you die, you should honestly like have both your drones die before your, your life dies. Like I said, ranked, very situational. Doesn't mean you're fucking on your phone. Tie around, no peeking anything. Obviously, it just means you until you get your job done until you get the wall open then that's when you start taking gunfights but you have to learn how to stay alive or else your 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 push basically just ends right there so understand when to take gunfights also droning do not get your drones destroyed in the prep phase uh is you should honestly never get your drone destroyed in the prep phase you should have the entries find the bomb site leave yours outside you guys are high enough players to understand you don't need to like, oh, where are they on the bomb site? Oh, with the, you, the reinforcing CC, so you know. So yes, keep your drones alive. Get good with the movement. Know how to like jump out of angle sometimes. Kind of like quick peek with the drone sometimes, you know, quick peek with the like, jump with it. But don't get them destroyed too much. Obviously, try to get the most amount of before a roamer just, you know, dead on shoots it. But yeah, once you get the bomb kind of planted or maybe, you know, man disadvantage, that's when you can start taking more engagements. But stay alive. If you can just learn to stay alive, everything else will come natural with common sense. Moving on to the flex. Probably one of the most simple rules because it's kind of a base on everything uh i got a twitch an ash uh a habana and a maybe iona last let's say they have a lot of shield setups i would probably want to bring someone with explosives i would go flores zofia uh someone else with the nades uh, maybe you don't have a hard breacher bring the hard breacher maybe you, you guys need someone to watch the flank everyone's kind of filled the role okay watch the flank so fill what your team needs it doesn't have to be anyone specific. You don't have to only be a, you know, entry. So kind of the big things about a flex is that there's just, there's things called secondary entry and secondary support. So this means you kind of are a secondary hard breacher. Who you're basically trying to stay alive as long as the main hard breach, or maybe you're trying to uh, trade. You're you're trading off with the entry. So there's a thing called refragging or trading. You guys already understand that. If you don't, that basically means uh, if your teammate dies by another person, you kill that guy who killed your teammate. So you trade lives. So it's very uh, good to understand that. So bring whatever your team needs. You can play any operator you want. Obviously, you don't don't just go fucking glass and sit on the roof. That's not, that's not a free thing. It's going what your team needs. Uh, next up, yeah, flank watch. I actually played flank watch the most in my challenger league career. So here's what I learned from some of the best people. Uh, and then obviously this is like Nomad Zero and Gridlock, very small ones, you can go line if you want sometimes, but... Position yourself in the best spot with your flank drones. I think having... you have to have at least one drone. Having two drones is almost mandatory because you can't really see like two rooms with one drone. Uh, especially when you're trying to hide yourself, which is another good stuff is... Put yourself in a position not too far away to take the engagement. If you see someone on your cam, you know, because all you have to do is like, get off your cam, turn that way, boom, he's dead. So you have to be very, very hidden, not like really in the open, but in a position where you have enough time to get off your cam. You have to be very patient. You have to be patient. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to sit on my cam. Oh, I watched it for 30 seconds. Uh, and then they flanked after I got off the cam. No, well, it's very, very rare that happens. Most of the time, you aren't patient enough. You didn't wait until the last 15 to 20 seconds and ranked. This is where it gets uh the, the sword becomes too sharp sometimes people aren't gonna flank that one most of the people in rank are dumb and they flank in like a minute 20 dude it's way too early way too early and then boom easy kill i kill them all with zero so you have to be patient but you also have to know how to give it up know when to give it up stop in a 2v5 bro get off the have your dead teammates sit on the cam bro you cannot be sitting there he's gonna flank 1v5 He's going to flank. Don't worry. Boom. You know, don't, but don't be that. You have to know when to give it up, but also know to be patient as well. So position yourself in a spot with both your cams. Uh, this is only your drones are probably just as important as uh, the, the supports. So we've gone over support, flex, entry, flank watch. What is the fifth one? You might ask. Fifth one is IGO. I'll also be explaining this for defense. IGO. A lot of people, I get people in FPL, people in ranked. A lot of people know me. They think that I'm on the IGO. When I used to play comp, you're like, are you the IGO for your team? Like, no. Why? Oh, you talk a lot. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. I am a vocal person. You guys know through everything. I am a vocal person. I'm not just some brain dead ash main fucking mute zipper on my mouth, killing everybody because I'm, oh, I'm too focused. I'm too tunnel vision. No. 
That's stupid. Learn how to talk. If you can't communicate, you are a, you can't be. Your team's gonna suffer. So get that out of your head. Get out of your head. If you are an entry at anybody, you have to be learn to be vocal. I'm not saying you have to like. I'm joining this. I'm vaulting the window. I'm you know don't don't do that. That's call, that's cluttering comms. But IGL, you have to understand almost every role. IGL is not an easy role because most of the time you are talking and you have to have authoritivity. I don't know what the word is for that, but you have to be authoritative. You can't just be like, uh, guys, can we maybe do a, a direct take? Maybe a default take? No, we're going to rush the site. Oh, sorry. No, you can't be that. But you have to be like, guys, if you want to win, trust me, let's do a default take. Uh, Nomad, you watch the flank. I'll, I'll use my teammates' names for this. Uh, Tra and Wes, you guys entry second floor. Jewel, watch the flank. Nomad, his name's actually Nomad. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard. Anyways, his name was actually Nomad. And well, we would call him Chris and he changed his name to blank. He would be like the flex, right? And then I would be the uh, hard, the support or the uh, the flank watch, doesn't matter. So you had to have authoritivity. I'm, I'm going to say that. I made that word up. This, this is a Theno vocabulary now. But you have to understand how everyone plays. You can't just be like yelling at everyone. No one's going to listen to you if you're just yelling them after the round. But you have to understand how to micromanage and give people tasks, not tell them what to do. Don't be like, yo, uh, try entry this room, entry that room, and then stop. The like, he knows how to entry, bro. These guys are like top level players. I don't need I don't need to boss you around. I would be like, try take over third floor and nomad you draw and join them in boom that's really all you need to say give them an objective most people are smart enough to do whatever you ask go go nade that jewel from below go clear that shield go clear that utility go watch that flank they're smart enough they know how to do it so you don't need to babysit everyone but you have to you have to make sure everything's getting done in the round uh, or else things overlap and then that's how you trip and you fall and then the, the you lose the round i would say don't be afraid to yell at someone don't be afraid to be like no wait stop picking or like just come back wait just chill you know or maybe you know you could be like hey i need you to open up the wall now or i need you to drone me right now and be like okay sure but you have you can't just be you can't just be like oh yeah random stuff like that you have to make sure it's actually like important in the moment you can't just be like <laughs> clean my shoes get me some water you know you don't be don't be like that guy but yeah i you have to understand how everyone plays if if someone fails the task who cares Ex talk about it after the round don't talk never complain in the middle of a round never ever ever or else nobody's gonna ever listen to you again they're not gonna listen to you if you bitch about someone for dying right after they die dude those guys are fucking deafening in discord they're not listening to you anymore so you have to understand you have to be like sun like kobe bryant says you have to learn how to be like sunshine and your teammates if you are on them too much then you're gonna sunburn them but if you come at the right times then it's a little bit better that's how it says in igo uh know when to also one more important thing is executes no when to spawn execute when you guys are stalling out give your guys a plan give your guys an objective like i talked about understand that when there's an opportunity to plant tell your teammates i need this covered i need this covered boom i'm gonna plant because you're the igl is mostly the support player because they're the bomb planter they they're the bomb planter wants to know where to plant okay i'm gonna plant here i need this covered boom setup gets uh fixed up so that's what i would say for ig on attack is uh be authoritative don't be afraid to yell at your teammates do not yell in the middle of the round uh understand how everyone plays and yeah just stay alive even if you're on even if you're dead you can still give calls so that's the attacking part let's move on to defense now defense we're gonna go over defense or uh, we're gonna go over support, flex, roamer, and IGL. Four roles. Starting out with support. Support uh, on defense, I would say, I mean, I played it for years before I even got into comp. And even when I was in comp, I played hard breach. Uh, it's kind of mostly similar to on attack. You don't want to die early. If you die early on site, boom, it's like a free ticket. It's like a free... Winko. Winko Wonka. Wonka whatever his name is dude from charlie and the chocolate factory that wonka i don't know what his name is and it's a free golden ticket hey we killed the we killed the uh the dude in sight on a on a, on a three-man roam boom they're gonna rush site and then all your roamers gotta come back and then it's a mess you lose a round probably so on support you should most likely be utility mostly overkills you should be making rotates you should be uh reinforcing walls you should be setting up your gadget maybe even your hard breach or uh like a cade or something like that but you should be also be on cams most of the time your 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 roamers do not have time oh let me check my cam real quick oh shoot jack was behind dead you got to be giving good calls on support learn your call outs if you don't have you have bad calls work on that but it's really easy most of the time you just sit in sight wait for people nowadays people in ranked are uh either the round's over in 30 seconds because there was bum rushing or they take two minutes and 30 seconds to get a wall open and by the time that happens boom it's like 
round's over already. All you had to do was just aim at the breach. Boom, dead. Uh, so get on cams for your teammates early in the round because mo you get the least amount of action early in the round unless they're rushing. Get on cams, know how to play your utility correctly. And um, even if you're a support player, this is the same thing as Heartbreacher. As long as you do your job, your job was to hold down sight. Then you can get aggressive for, for picks. Then you can take gunfights if you're in man disadvantage. Don't be afraid for that. But understand you need to be alive most of the time. Now, going on to a flex, this is basically, like I said, flex is probably really easy on defense. Roles are not that strict on defense because the whole de you all, a five man is like your man advantage is your defense, basically. Crossfires and all that kind of stuff. So flex would be, uh, you know, like I said, anything your team needs. Do you need extra wall that out? Do you need more rotates? Do you need a shield? Do you need more utility? Do you need more guns? Do you need a roamer? Do you need a support player? Anything, you know, it's very, very easy on defense because the whole concept of defense is make them come to you. So I think a good example of, of a, a flex support is like smoke. Smoke, you are allowed to take gunfights most of the time, but the longer you stay alive, the deadlier you are. It's like a, like a scarecrow, basically, You're just always staring at the enemy. You smoke it at the end, but then at the end, you can get crazy with the shotgun or the SMG or like, you know, if you die, it's not the biggest deal, but obviously you lose your smoke grenades, blah, 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 whatever. So flex is pretty easy. You guys have common sense. You can know what I mean. Roamers. Roaming is probably one of the most important roles, I would say, because they create the tempo of the round. They create if it's an aggressive defense or if it's a passive defense. Are you taking a lot of map control? Or are you giving up a, uh, a lot of map control? You're bunkering with the team. Obviously, you don't want to be vigil in sight in the. F you don't want to. You don't want to be vigil falling back to sight in like what two minutes and two minutes. You want to be roaming until at least a minute thirty. If you can take a, at least a minute thirty in the clock, okay, maybe you did your job. Spawn peeking, uh, friggin' double peeking the same angle. Once you just had a gun fire in it, get those terrible habits out of your mind. If you want to spawn peek, sure, I don't care, but you're literally taking a huge gamble that you can be a lot more guaranteed later in the round. That's why you don't see a lot of spawn peaks on, on, in Pro League. Some of them are, but you don't see them most of the time. D on Honor Roamer, the most important thing is understand when to give it up and when not to give it up. Roaming is not just staying alive for the longest time. It's creating the most amount of pressure. And for example, let's say, let's say here is the brick wall. The brick wall is the planting the bomb. This is your site setup. This is your defense right here. Uh, You are in the middle. You're in the middle Uh, and you are the roamer. And then, or you're a person here. And then the, and then the attackers are a car. The car is trying to hit the wall. I know it's a weird, weird concept, but the car is trying to hit the wall. If you keep pushing the car back and it keeps moving forward, you keep pushing it back. By the time they get over here near the wall, it's already like a minute left in the round. So it's kind of like a tug of war. Want to play a little bit of tug of war, but obviously give it up. Um, don't be afraid if you have to take a one for one, but understand when to give it up. Okay, I'm being pressured. I know this is happening because I've died to this multiple times. If you're getting pressured, fall back a little bit. Go back a room. Go back a room until you're back in sight. Um, shoot as many drones as you can. You should most of the time as a roamer, you're like alibi or capkin, so you don't have that much setup. Collect as many drones as you can. That way it makes your life easier. You're not getting droned out by fucking bees or not grim. Grim's terrible, but like, you know, you're getting droned like bees, basically. As, when I face against SSG in a scrim, dude, I could probably maybe hit. <laughs> it's really hard to hit their drones because their, their droning is really good. Um, so once you kind of do all that kind of stuff, roaming, you know, get in the first two picks and then come back. Uh, another really important thing, like we talked about on, with Bosco on, on attack, as a roamer, stop peeking when you have man advantage towards the end of the round. If you have a 4v2 or maybe even a 3v, 3v2 and there's 30 seconds left, why are you peeking? Why are you taking the gunfight? Like, it, it doesn't make sense to me. And it really depends. It's situational. And then moving on to IGL. IGL on defense. You don't need really need an IGL on defense. Uh, even when, when I used to play comp, IGL on defense in, in, in general, it's everyone, like I said, everyone's kind of the same player. Everyone has the same objective just to stay alive and make the crossfires in sight. It's not as complicated as attack because attack, you have to come onto a setup and you have to break it down. On defense, the only thing that you, you just have to just wait for the attack to, to uh, commence. The only things I would say is, all right, guys, let's come back to site, roamers. Or, uh, hey guys, let's just chill. We have a minute 30. Stop peeking. Well, play a little more passive. You don't have to stop peeking completely, but yeah, you have to create the temple for your team. Be like, hey guys, you know, let's let's do this. Let's do that. Not like, or like maybe like, hey, you two, go double flank up there right now. You have to do it now. Or uh, if someone said, hey, can I, I might go flank this. No, come back. Stay here. 
uh obviously don't be a don't be a, a dick about it but just understand wait i know the right decision obviously that's why you're an igl you know you mo you know mostly what is the best for your team that's why you are on igl and you're controlling the tempo of the round so those are my roles explained um as a previous competitive player and i've watched uh, most of my information is also from uh, pro league players, ex pro league, still in the league right now. Um, go check out that podcast below if you guys want to. The six on six with Bosco, and he explains uh, with Canadian and Intero about more about the roles. And if you're an aspiring player to get good at this game, definitely 100 percent you can check it out. I've watched all those episodes; they're very, very good. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, I love talking about this kind of stuff, and hopefully, I helped you a little bit. Like I said. It's better be a gardener or it's better be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So if you can just get really fucking good like me and then you just go up against noobs and not noobs, undisciplined freaks and ranked, then the game becomes a lot easier at your will. So leave a like if you enjoy this video. Subscribe if you're new. Watch these videos right here if you want to watch more Athena content and get good at Siege. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.